Test, test. Good, e good, e good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tuesday, June 6, 2023 City Council meeting. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to have a moment of silence for uh, Troy Morgan and uh, condolences to his family. Troy uh, passed away early this morning. As you know, he was the director of Jefferson County EMA, but he served on City Council uh, before that and was also our county coroner. He literally dedicated his life to public service uh, for the city of Madison, Jefferson County. So if you would please uh, let's have a moment of silence uh, uh, in memory of Troy Morgan. Thank you, everyone. Um, like with uh, our meetings, we have quite a robust agenda. I'd like to start uh, by uh, rising and um, bowing our heads for the Lord's Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, and we'll get the meeting in order. Thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, may we have a roll call. Please include Councilman Tivenaugh, who is uh, participating remotely. Krebs? Here. Lucy Dottillo? Here. Schaefer? Here. Chatham? Here. Bartlett? Here. Dan Dottillo? Here. And Tevinoff? Here. Okay, thank you. Council, have you had an opportunity to review the minutes from May 16th? And if so, entertain a motion to approve those minutes. I, I move, move that we accept the minutes as presented. I second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, our guest tonight, Commissioner Robert Little. Um, Bobby, if you'd like to come to the podium, I know that you wanted to maybe address council tonight, and you're welcome to do so at this time, or you're welcome to um, wait till the uh, later in the meeting under public comment. It's up to you. All right. Thank you, sir. Chief Kenny Washer and Commissioner Robert Little. Push that red, push the button there, and we'll light your mic up. And thank you for being here, Commissioner. Okay, we're here on behalf to talk about the Riverfront Run Car Show and the River Rat Rods Club. And uh, this meeting's long been overdue. Uh, this is to thank people. I'd like to thank the Board of Public Works for allowing us to have our footprint to host a show on the riverfront, which is the best venue in Indiana to have any event. Also, the City of Madison employees always pitch in and let us use their equipment. And uh, thank you, Mayor Courtney, who's always supported us. Uh, unfortunately, he's worked a gate with my wife the last couple of years, so he's really got his eyes open there. Yes, I do. But uh, he shuttled car show attendees, so thank you to him. Uh, thanks to John Wallace, Sheriff Flint, who were in the attendance and their office, officers were there. Uh, we had an older cupper, couple who had their car in the show and they made a comment that they felt secure and it was a, a good environment and for them. Uh, to all the unnamed volunteers who donated their time to make the show happen. Thanks to all the businesses, large and small, who have faithfully donated each year to help us continue to grow. Most of all, thanks to the residents of Madison who have, to my knowledge, not complained when they get invaded by cars and uh, their neighborhoods are, are uprooted. This year we had 633 cars go through the gate, so uh, we've evidently done something right. But uh, thank you all for allowing us to grow and uh, continue. Kenny, got anything? No, I'll just echo what Commissioner Little said. Thanks, everyone. Show has continued to grow each and every year. Uh, the 
mayor asked me, we had 633 cars this year. Mayor asked me at the end of the show, he said, how are you going to top this? I said, 700 next year. Thanks again. Well, Commissioner, let me also say to you and, and Chief Washer, thank you guys for all the work. It's a, You have a small car club. Um, it's not like you have 100 people in your car club. How many people are in the River Rat Rods car Six. club? Six. Six. So an organization of six people uh, bringing a, um, an event, a unique event to Madison's Riverfront that really kicks off the summer that had record number of 630 cars and is uh, second only to Chautauqua in attendance throughout the course of the year. This year through our data collection, and Tony's back there, I believe we had 27,000 unique visitors and over 30,000 over the course of the weekend. And you have a one-day event, so let's, let's also close yeah. that. Uh, our city staff also added to the flavor of the event with uh, movies in the park. That was also very well received. And then our downtown merchants and uh, Visit Madison and the tourism uh, apparatus here in the city hosted them uh, when they weren't down there, you know, looking at uh, the hot rods. So I think it was a community-wide effort. And I want to thank you guys for your vision and bringing it here and all the work, uh, uh, especially Janine, right, for yeah. – uh, making sure it all went smoothly, and Kim. Biggest Kim credit goes well. to this guy right here. He lives down there the last two days, and unfortunately I lived with him part of it. So. <laughs> but uh, we couldn't do it without Kenny. There's no well, way. We both lived down there for about you, six weeks. You really time. did. I would be down there at night, and uh, you guys were up there on a lift uh, making sure you're getting wiring in place for speakers, and it was just an all-around fun event. I think everybody had a great time. Yes, indeed. Yep. Thank you, guys, both. Thank you, Thank Commissioner, you for being here, too. Thank you, all. You can have a back. It's phenomenal. Well, as we uh, move through the agenda, we'll also um, uh, ask council before we get to reports of city officials, are there any reports, recommendations, or other business of standing select committees of city council? Hearing none, we'll move on. I'll introduce Dewey O'Neill, uh, who is here, who is our code enforcement officer, enjoying his 18-month uh, anniversary, I think, and he'll give us an update on Blight, and he's joined by um, our planning director, Nicole Shell. Has it been 18 months? Is uh, that you, right? Did you say 18 months? Oh, yet? my yeah. goodness. Yes, it has. I'm usually – uh-oh, Nicole, what happened? I'm usually in front of just a few folks. So, uh, hi, everybody. You're live also. We're recording this and streaming it live on YouTube TV, so sure. there's probably about 10,000 people watching right now. <laughs> Not to make you nervous about anything. No, that's very comfortable. I, I, you know, I taught for a while, so, you know, that's fine. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Um, yes, I'm Dewey O'Neill, your code enforcement officer. Um, where am I at, Nicole? Thanks for bearing with us on technology. I'm here to give you an update um, on uh, year-to-date nuisance cases as well as uh, unsafe structures. Um, we'll begin with nuisance cases. So far to date, I have had um, 113 new cases, but I'm currently working 190, actually 196 probably actually over 200 as of today because I've had some more today. Um, active cases, that includes unsafe structures though, not just nuisance cases. Um, so the percentage that we're actually down year to date is probably less than that 49%, but nonetheless, um, you can see 39 new cases just in April. I'm gonna give you some examples of what I see on a daily basis here in just a second. Um, primarily, this year, I'm seeing more trash issues, that, but take a step back, it is just uh, early growing season or starting of the growing season, so I'm sure the grass and weeds will pick up quite quickly. Um, but primarily, I've seen trash, um, abandoned and junk vehicles, and then some unclean and disorderly premises stuff, too. So we'll go through some of that. And what I'm about to show may disturb the 10,000 folks that, uh, that the mayor uh, or others. So these are some issues. Um, photo on the top or the, the left to your left is um, quite, a, quite a mess. Um, 
Additionally, front porch on the bottom right. Most of these things, I should say, have been abated. Um, can I just click back to go back to the back one? Okay. The, the top left, if you see that, is something that's going to be a continuous uh, abatement process. We had some volunteers from Ivy Tech in uh, mid-April, late April, that helped us with that. But it's going to be a continuous thing. It's a, it's a flooding issue. I don't think it's a intentional. Uh, dumping issue, but you do see uh, it's kind of a, uh, blocked out, but there is a sofa there. There's some water heaters down there. There's some appliances, some other things. So we will get that taken care of, but um, that is that is an ongoing thing. The photo on the right is abated. The photo on the left has been abated as well. Um, bottom right is something I continue to work on. It's a continuous issue that I have with the property owner there. Uh, grass and weeds, like I say, is starting right now. Um, that is actually, I just inspected today, so we'll get that taken care of here in the next few days, certainly by the end of the week. Uh, the bottom right is has been fixed and abated. Uh, both of these have been abated as well. Actually, the picture on the left, the top left there, is an ongoing process um, up on the hilltop, but the vehicles on the right have been abated as well. And both of these have been, have been taken care of. So. Okay. Any questions or thoughts yet for me? No? Sorry, yeah? <laughs> I meant for them, but. Thank you, young lady. No, I apologize. All right, let's talk neglected, vacant, abandoned, and unsafe structures. Um, initially, when I started, we, and I say we, my, the building inspector and I came upon or identified roughly 100 plus structures within the city limits that were per the uh, unsafe building law, which is what we use, considered unsafe. Um, we are working on more appropriate definitions for that, and Nicole um, may speak about that, but we're working on a, a, a vacant and abandoned ordinance that will correctly identify or label particular properties. Currently, we still have 93 properties on the list, so some of them have been abated. You've probably seen some of those things that have happened. Um, just a side note, and I mentioned this yesterday in our uh, Board of Public Works meeting that uh, I spoke with um, the Postal Service, and their definition may vary or is different from ours, but there could be 10 times the number of vacant properties in the city that we have currently identified. What we're, what I'm attempting to do, what we're attempting to do is move from, this is a, a rough graphic here, but you, we find things that are unsafe and unhabitable and we want to take them from an abandoned, vacant and neglected status, obviously to something that is safe and habitable. And the two areas that we're working on is the abandoned and vacant area. And we, we are working on that with Nicole and I are working on that to create the vacant and abandoned ordinance. Um, and I'm certain we'll, we'll hear about more about that. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. We're going to go through, uh, about 10, 10 different properties, um, that we consider, I won't say the worst of the worst, but they're certainly certainly in need of attention. Um, and these are those properties, and we'll go through each one. Craigmont Street, Elm, Third. Not all of these, in fact, just one of them is 
inhabited at the moment. Um, one of them, actually two of them are not even uh, houses, but they're structures that are definitely unsafe. And we'll go through that. This is 319 Craigmont Street, just south of uh, Main Street, uh, West Main Street. We initially uh, did an inspection there in August. And in January, the building inspector issued what we call a five-day um, letter, which requires the owners to contact us to determine what's happening at the location. We've had no response there and we will be seeking what we call an inspection warrant to be able to get in and look at what's happening with the structure. This is the only inhabited structure that we know of right now on this list. <clears throat> this is what is known as the Humes Home or 709 Elm Street. Um, this property has been on building inspectors radar since uh, almost 10 years. Um, again, we issued a five day letter uh, back in August. In January, um, Mr. Jenner sent an attorney letter to them. We did initially or finally meet with them in February. And in April, a notice was given to correct the issues within 60 days. And we are still um, waiting to see what happens there. This is not a, a residence, but um, you wouldn't know this is there unless you travel down the alley between uh, Main and Third. Yeah, um, just north of the Red Roaster, or not Red Roaster, Red Pepperoni and all that. Yeah, this is being held together with uh, bungee cords. And we are concerned that it will it's certainly open, as you can see. I, I apologize for the picture. I probably should have taken a better picture. The, the sun glare is there, but it is um, the walls are going to fall. And whether it's inward or outward, we don't know. Certainly, the alley is probably not that well traveled, but nonetheless, it's, it's a concern for us. Seven seventy six West West Third Street. Um, we have had a number, I've had a number of nuisance cases here since November of 2022. Um, in February, the building inspector did deem the structure unsafe. We were allowed in. Uh, we did have a meeting with the owner and I have attempted to contact her multiple times recently because she did leave a voicemail for me, but uh, she's not answering. Uh, we have nuisance cases. It's not habitable, but folks are currently living there. One forty-five Lafayette Street. Again, probably you wouldn't even realize it's there unless you drove back there. It's by the what's the church? St. Michael's. Thank you. Um, this is actually an okay-looking picture because they have done some some uh, demolition to it. They actually do have a demolition permit. So it does look better, but um, uh, again, back in February, they had a 60 day notice to, um, to correct all the problems or demolish and they have yet to do that. Certainly one you're probably not aware of. This is 1483 West Hutchinson, which is just to the south, just in the city limits, just to the south of the new jail. Um, it, we have been unable to contact anyone regarding this. I send contractors to cut the grass and weeds all the time. Um, there's activity of people being there, but I have no way to know. Uh, you know, I, I, I visit it once a week, but it is unsafe from the standpoint that to the right of the actual home, that's about to fall. There may be one or two posts holding that up. Um, there seems to be, uh, I mean, I'm not a 
police officer, a criminal investigator or anything, but there seems to be drug activity or something happening there. So, 307 Hendrick Street is on the hilltop. Um, it doesn't look particularly bad. You can see the garage door there does is open. On the back side, there is a sliding glass door and windows that are broken in, um, evidence of people being in there. We have met with the daughter of the owners. Um, her intention is to demolish the unit. Um, but again, since February, attempts to reach her and decide what they're going to do have, haven't happened. This is Banta Avenue, also on the hill. Um, not a residence, but you can see the severity of the structure leaning backwards. Um, good news is, as I mentioned yesterday at the BPW, that it is far enough away from the home in the back. As you can see, the gray home there, it's probably not going to impact it should it fall. Um, but it, it in fact, I emailed with the folks today regarding this. So hopefully we'll have this taken care of soon. Seven zero five Walnut Street um, does have we we met with the owner. We did inspections there. Um, actually, just recently, and you can tell me, Tony, when that happened. We I think Thursday or Friday of last week we secured the back side of this home with fencing, correct? Um, and I saw that today. So the, the back side is open. There's a, there's a fairly deep uh, pit or basement that is on the back side of this, but all work and rehabilitation has stopped due to some conflict between the owner and uh, contractors. Five twenty four Jefferson, same owner as the previous slide. Um, again, it doesn't look doesn't look terrible here, but the building inspector did deem it unsafe. Sixty days back in January, I believe it's the uh, in the back there are, and I'm I'm not the building inspector, so I don't know the technology. But uh, in the back and the flooring, there's some issues there that that collapse could happen. Um, Again, February, we did, o did issue that notice of violation to get it corrected. Moody Park is, um, perhaps Mr. Jenner can talk more if that's appropriate, but um, this is a current picture just last week. The good news is the uh, 408 location has been demolished. Um, the owner does have a second demo permit that has not um, has not been completed yet. I believe it's 412 or 414 is the right address. So uh, I'm not sure how much more I can comment on that. But the Board of Public Works issued a uh, all of the trailers that are in violation uh, and they have appealed that to the court so we are in the process of dealing with that through the court system um, we have um, we are looking at um, some potential negotiated agreement um, which if that happens it would come before the council and the board of public works but uh, we're not there yet so it's just going through the process is really all I have for you and any questions for me we talked about yesterday Board of Public Works that this is a very important process we're going through it's very complicated uh, when you get into the legal aspect of it in, it can take a very very long time but to just reemphasize the importance I don't know if you saw last week's courier but there was a an article in there about a building collapse in the heart of North Vernon uh, in the news, there's uh, stories about, I think it was 
Iowa maybe or Idaho that had another major building collapse on top of the one that happened in Florida last year. Uh, it, it's, this is a really hard initiative to get ahead of because there's so many properties that, that fall into this unsafe category. Uh, the important thing is to work collaboratively with the property owners. Uh, that is working in tremendous, uh, with tremendous results through our PACE program, but when it comes to the actual em enforcement side, if we make it to that side of the arc, it becomes really difficult and very time consuming, but we're making progress and we're seeing lots of investment. Uh, we're also learning a lot as we go through the court system, but that also uh, increases time and cost. Uh, right now, I'd like to see if council has any questions for Dewey, and then I know that there may be someone in the audience who would like to ask a question. And let's do it that way. Uh, Ma'am, if you had a question for, please come to the podium and yep. your name and address, please. Thank you. I'm Deanna Shelley. I live downtown, have most all of my life. Um, I noticed you said there were a hundred structures, and I was wondering if any of them had any historical significance. Yeah, certainly. Um, I rely upon my um, historic preservationist and, and Nicole to, to direct me there, but sure. I mean, it's hard to 1809, right? I'm not a, I'm not a native. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, but uh, so don't hold that against me. I haven't been here that long. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, so certainly, there's going to be. I mean, I, I would, I would say that there's historic, you know, significance to everything that's been around mm -hmm. 200 plus years. On those, um, what is a, a possible proposal? Maybe selling them for a dollar. The city doesn't own them, ma'am. The, oh, they're privately owned. Okay, so there's the long process? Yes. Okay. Uh, what would what would bring it to the point of uh, razzing it, tearing it down? Um, well, you still have to get ownership? Uh, oh, the, uh, Joe can explain that, the abatement process. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you get to, if it gets to the point where it is deemed unsafe, then we have to go through a process before the Board of Public Works, and then the Board of Public Works can determine the level of unsafeness and determine whether it needs to be torn down, if it needs to be boarded up, if it needs to be, you know, taped off or or whatever in order to ensure safety so that people are not going in there. And if the answer is tear it down then um, I, then we can do so however it's at the expense of the city and it can only be done and then you still don't get ownership it just places a lien on the property um, and so oftentimes you know frankly we just have to make an economic decision as to whether it makes sense because it isn't cheap to tear things down um, and what is the ability to have it, um, you know, redone, have it, have something done to it, um, and is there going to be any chance to recoup that money? At that point, could you sell it for a dollar? Well, again, it still wouldn't be city ownership. It still is owned by the property owner. But yet you could it, But it you down. could then enforce your lien. Um, and you wouldn't be able to sell it for a dollar. Um, you would you would go through a, a there would be a process to do so. And you could foreclose on the property to recoup your money on the lien. Um, you know, and there's a whole other set of things involved with that. Is there um, are there any other liens on the property? Right. Is there a mortgage? You know, if there's a mortgage on the property, that mortgage is going to be in front of of any kind of a right. of a lien. So I mean, there, there's just there's a lot of steps and a lot to it. That's why it's um, it's it's a fairly laborious process to do so, mm -hmm. um, and that's why um, I would, and as I said at the uh, Board of Public Works meeting, um, commend Dewey and his staff and Nicole. I mean, I think they're doing a pretty good job of trying to work with people and try to get them to do things so that we don't have to go through that process. That does seem obvious. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Mr. Mayor? Yes. I think in, in light of her question, though, I think it's appropriate to mention that we've had at least one right off the top of my head property that was deemed unsafe and the property owner ultimately was able to sell that to an organization which then came before the PACE board and converted a teardown PACE grant to a rehabilitation grant and that building is not done but it certainly is a process that they're going through and re rehabilitating it. So there are many people in the community that are making every effort to save those properties. Yeah, then the benefits of this uh, effort are tremendous, uh, raising property values, making them safer, reducing, um, you know, um, unsafe, uninhabitable housing. The goal is to restore these properties and get them back on the tax rolls and lived in, uh, but also hold property owners accountable along the way. Any other questions for Duty? Dewey? On. Thank you. Good meeting you all. Thank you. So and much. Uh, next up, I'll introduce uh, Emily McKinney, who is here to talk about uh, uh, our, our annual tax abatement recommendations, and she is with our economic development. Good evening, Council. I'm Emily McKinney, the Associate Economic Development Director. I'm here to present to you this evening our annual tax abatements. We have six current tax abatements with the city. We have Grody Industries. Um, U.S. Premier Tube, uh, VSG, which is Vehicle Service Group, the Cotton Mill, uh, Riverside Tower, doing business as Riverside Tower Apartments, and the Trilogy Real Estate. So I'm here to ask if you would pass a motion to allow the mayor to sign their CF1 forms and demonstrate that they are in compliance so we can send their completed forms to the assessor and auditor's office. Council. So, may I ask, do, do we know that all of all of these six people have, I hate to say, kept their end of the bargain up, but have met the requirements that they set forth as far as uh, improvements or um, employment of additional persons? We used to go through these with, well, I guess. I'm just curious, do, have they all met their requirements to continue their abatements? All of the EDAs, as we understand it, these all have been approved before, many councils before us. Last year was the first time that we went through this in a couple years. And as we've reviewed them, again, the economic development agreements are all based upon estimates. Each one of these businesses have continued to grow without tax abatement in our community. But those specific uh, agreements that previous councils have, have set us uh, you know, as far as we're concerned, these, these corporations have met and continue to be in compliance. We're substantially in compliance. Substantially in compliance, work. yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joe, since uh, I'm an employee of Grody, should I abstain from the vote, do you think? Looking for a motion for all of these as one lot, except for the Grody one. Except for Grody. We'll do them separately. Do them separately. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept these abatements for U.S. Premier Tube Mills Vehicle Service Group. Trilogy Real Estate, Riverside Towers LP, and Cotton Mill LLC. And I will second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And now do we have a motion for Grody Industries? I make a motion that we approve Grody also for the abatement. Okay. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Yes. Okay. One abstention. Thanks, Council. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. We have 
one bill on third reading. Joe will go through that now. And we do have an amendment. Yes, please do. What? Um, this is ordinance number 2023-9, an ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Madison, Indiana, repealing, repealing and replacing the City of Madison Code Chapter 98, Streets and Sidewalks, specifically 98 .01, 98 .02, 98 .03, 98 98.01, 98.02, 98.04, 98.04, 98.06, 98.20 through 98.24. Um, and I do believe that we have an amendment that has been presented. Um, and so that is to add to 98.20 section D which would state permits shall be valid for a period of no more than 90 days until work commences and all work shall be performed within the additional 90 day period unless extended by the Board of Public Works and Safety permit must be posted and visible on the job site and so if we could um, if there is a motion to amend um, ordinance number 2023-9 with that uh, language Motion to amend the ordinance as written. Okay, so we've got a motion. Patrick, do you want a second? Yes, I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing no discussion, um, all in favor of the amendment? Aye. 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 Were there any opposed? No opposed. So the motion and the amendment carries, and now we'll do a roll. Are there any other <coughs> amendments? Hearing none others, we will do a roll call vote on ordinance number 2023-9. Bartlett? Yes. Chatham? Yes. Schaefer? Yes. Dan Dottillo? Yes. Lucy Dottillo? Yes. Tevinaw? Yes. And Krebs? Yes. Council, thank you. I just want to make a remark as we um, approve this. This is a really significant piece of legislation. It is going to uh, reintroduce, I should say, a permitting process and an inspection process, as well as a warranty process for, what's that? For uh, um, excavation in our streets and sidewalks and right of ways. Uh, as we have dug through this, uh, no pun intended, uh, you know, we've the universe of excavations that have happened over the years in the city is uh, over 200 that need to be evaluated for uh, completion, repair, uh, removal and repair, and it is a pretty significant uh, work that's going to take several years to correct and reverse the negative trends of, of, uh, of that process. But what we are introducing is something that will literally save the this, this city hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, future road damage because of uh, excavations that happen pretty frequently, candidly, across the city. So thank you all for working with us on uh, this important legislation. Moving on, uh, we'd now like to recess the council meeting and call to order the public hearing regarding, regarding Ordinance 2023-10, which is to repeal and replace the garbage collection ordinance 2013-2 with respect to TSO rates. Uh, as we work through this process, and I think we are signing, did we circulate a sign-in sheet already? Okay. Um, we also have uh, Gina, Tony, and Ken Washer here to help us answer any questions council might have as we open this up for discussion. But uh, let's uh, recess and call to order the public hearing now. Uh, for the public, this is an opportunity if anybody has a statement they'd like to make with regards to the proposed changes to our trash ordinance uh, with regards to TSO rates. Our TSO is a transfer uh, station operation and that is the center on the hilltop that processes the trash that's collected by the city uh, trash collection staff. It is processed and then it is collected and removed through a contractual arrangement that we have with Rumpke. Rumpke is obviously one of the largest waste management companies in the country 
And uh, what we're now doing is proposing to increase the rates at the transfer station operation and a few uh, nominal rates that um, surround the garbage collection. So at this point in time, anybody in the public like to make a statement with regards to the proposed ordinance? We'll hear those now. question is how does this affect the individual citizen homeowner uh, it does not affect household collection rates but if you take trash to the transfer station operation uh, the per ton rate will increase but it does not affect uh, household collection rates okay thank, thank you, you. any further comment from the public any other comment from the council do you have presentations you want to no um, oh. I'm ready to close the okay. public hearing and uh, we'll move we'll reconvene the city council meeting now we have bill on second reading which is ordinance number 2023-10 and then is the repeal and replace ordinance number 2013-2 regarding garbage collection um, and this is regarding the public hearing that we just had um, yes the council's and that's sponsored by councilwoman yeah. krebs yeah. as we work through this uh, each of you were provided a study we did with regards to our uh, transfer station operation. Uh, we also provided a history of ordinances of when the transfer station was created in 1985. Recycling program uh, uh, began in the early 90s. There's only been three uh, rate changes in that 38 year history and over the course of the last 30 years or so I believe our transfer station or our, our average rates have only increased uh, modestly on a weekly basis. So. You had financial projections. Uh, the last council meeting, we did a presentation that outlined the condition of the facilities and equipment, which are aging, and uh, the significant deficits that are being incurred in order to support the operation. Uh, now we're taking a multi-phase approach to address the deficits and uh, comply with state statute with regards to uh, the financial sustainability and fiscal, fiscal sustainability of transfer station operation. Um, we've got our uh, street staff here available to answer questions and uh, as well as myself there any questions from city council with regard to this uh, I guess the first thing is the uh, there's section C 50.03 a2 we've added some or cleaned up some of the language there but we've left it that recyclable should be picked up the first and third weeks of each month. We don't have any anticipation that we're going to change to every other week pick up on recyclables, or do we? Or well, um, again, a lot of things happen over time that's in contradiction to what was maybe originally set up and intended. The original ordinance that was approved a long time ago that then was updated in 2013 with new rates called for every other week recycling and uh, so what we've done is continued that we're just saying that uh, it's we're not changing the ordinance we're just saying it's going to be more frequently as determined by the Board of Public Works and Safety there's no plan to change the frequency of the recycling yeah. and then I guess well I don't think you I don't, I'm not sure you answered the question you're you want this updated where it says we're picking it up every week I, well, that was ordinance says every other week. Uh, that would have been part says of the question. It's every other week, un unless Board of Public Works determines it's more frequent than that, and it has, and I'm not proposing that it be changed. But again, this is all about evaluating the cost of service. Yes. It's all about evaluating the cost of service. Mm -hmm. If uh, if Board of Public Works determines in the future that it can only afford to pick up recycling once a week as it was originally intended, then it would have to have to make that change. I'm not recommending that change. I'm just saying is that the flexibility is incorporated to 
pick up recycling more frequently than every other week. Currently it's weekly and the ordinance says it's every other week. So we're keeping the current practice but actually adding the flexibility of making it weekly in the ordinance. So I'm fine with leaving it as it is, but if we do leave it, then we should fix the typo. There's first Tuesday of the week. Should oh, be first yeah. Tuesday of the you month. Caught that earlier. Okay. So I'd motion that we change 50.03 A2 to read recyclables should be picked up on the first and third weeks of each month following the first Tuesday of the month. Okay. Rather or than more week. frequently as determined. Or more frequently, yeah. Well, we can postpone just, yeah, I guess we can hold that off. And you already, you have the fund balances including TSOs. We're already in the negative for TSO. Yeah. And then there was discussion about the length restriction of the TSO. Um, I mean, do we... I don't know if you had a chance to read through what I uh, sent over, but did you email I did, something? Earlier? I did, but not till right at the start of the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, um, I so you have a chance it, to read that. Um, our staff is here; they can address the the length um, a, a concern that you and Patrick have raised. It might be a good time to do that because you know, as there there's been the traditional six foot, but also our equipment has changed since 2013, and that I think is prompting. Uh, a different processing mandated by Rumpke at the TSO. Chief? Council members, the major reason for the change in the length was the change in the compactors that two major compactors that we're using are on the garbage side and the new compactor on the recycling side. We actually have those on a four foot platform now. We lost four foot of depth when we had to put them on the platform so that they would fit up to the 53 foot trailers that we're now using as opposed to the 42 yard compactors that were set on the ground. Consequently, we have lost all of our funnel of our hopper and we have lost width in the sides by doing so. Um, most contractors bring stuff in in dump trailers and with the six foot lengths and some of them fudge a little bit. They don't lay it in there straight and it gets twisted and putting it in those new hoppers, it is an absolute mess. Uh, we have jams, we've had, we've had it jammed up bad enough that we had to get a backhoe and set up on top of the I-beam to, to dig it out. Um, so that's what we're trying to avoid and to keep everything moving in a, in, a quick fa in a quick fashion. We are only talking about construction material in that. We're not talking about a couch or a chair we can put the couch or a chair up against the 12 inch concrete wall in about 30 seconds we can reduce that couch to less than less than its length it was and it will fit we're talking about structural construction material is what we're talking about okay so, Josh, so that's to good to the hear uh, proposal you sent to make any clarifications on that but that's the reason behind the the length and that is to avoid a costly service call for a jamming of a compactor. Yeah. So uh, that, that's definitely good to hear that, it, that you're only intending for construction of materials, but that's not what our ordinance actually states or will will state, I guess. There's still a, a management call up there, uh, of the on-site staff that's there every day. Uh, and I think that we should give them the flexibility of looking at items and determining whether or not, you know, they're going to be problematic or, or not problematic for the uh, compactor. And I mean, I guess so. Should we add that language at the discretion of TSO personnel? Larger items may be accepted if there's if they don't believe there's if risk of damage. If you're uncomfortable with uh, knowing that it's being delegated to the on staff person, we can add that. In hearing Kenny's uh, feedback there, I think I'd reverse it. Leave this, the length change, but add the discretion to take other items in, that are yeah, larger. That's than, not intended for sofas and things like that. Way, that. We can reduce them in length in a heartbeat. So basically say the TSO personnel may accept larger items 
at their discretion if they believe that they will not cause damage to any of the TSO equipment. And I can write that down so it's clear, but do you have an issue with that, Patrick? Can uh, look at the suggested language and bring the amendment at the next meeting, if that's okay with you. Um, I'm okay with that. Okay, and we'll circulate it ahead of time. And then the last thing, I probably should have mentioned during the public hearing, I guess, but we had discussed a little bit about adding a <coughs> lower minimum charge potentially for up to, say, 250 pounds, for instance. Do we have any idea how many residents bring guess loads that are smaller than 500 pounds and how many of them would be lower than 250 are you no talking city residents or people outside the city city residents primarily city residents on any given day it could be 10 or 50. We, uh, in the future as we talk about uh, implementing technology to a process that really hasn't changed much since 1985 we'll be able to capture that information but we don't have that information right now uh, there's a very manually driven collection of data for reporting to IDEM there and for billing purposes. What we did with these rates is we took the per ton rate and literally one fourth, one half, 75% and then 100%. And, and keep in mind that, you know, smaller loads also cost more to process. Uh, yep. And so again, I, I think that where we landed was pretty, pretty fair with regard to the per ton rate and just doing it in fourths. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have a problem with the rates. Yeah. It's, my question would be that do we take that 500 limit down to a 250 minimum limit? Because there's a lot of people that if you haul a, a couch up there, it's not going to be 250 pounds usually. Newer ones with the electronics with the motors might, but uh, a, a recliner or something like that. So you're going to pay more to drop it off the TSO and haul it yourself than if you call the city and have the lightning loader right. come and pick it up. doesn't. There's point, a disconnect point, there to me. Noted. Uh, what I would say here is, you know, what we're trying to do is eliminate a pretty substantial deficit, mm -hmm. and we can get creative in the future. Uh, when we get some more and better information, I think, to guide, it, guide that decision. Just to reiterate that current deficit, uh, as of today is $193,210.70. Yeah, and as we did went through the financial projections at the last meeting, you know, this will, you know, this as well as the changes we made moving staffing over to streets because that's funded by, by MDH will probably knock about, I want to say now a quarter million dollars off of our deficit where we're still looking at a projected couple hundred thousand dollar deficit this year that we'll have to appropriate for and address, uh, address on how to fully eliminate the deficit. So we're, we're phasing in. There's been a lot you know, that's happened the last few years that's uh, contributed to the timing of this and the deficit. And, uh, but uh, I think we have at least a plan to start restoring some of the solvency to that operation. It will take investment. Uh, our equipment is aged, outdated. Um, it is um, very manually driven. There's no automation. There's a lot of things that we can consider on how to improve the operation of the TSO and bring it, bring it into the current current times for waste removal. So, Josh, I think where you landed, if yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, was this, the first one was changing week to month in, uh, it would be A2. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. So I think Josh had a motion to amend. It was frankly, it's a typographical error on um, 50.03A2, changing the first Tuesday of the week to the first Tuesday of the month. Is there a second? Second. 
Okay, any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of that amendment? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Are there any other amendments or uh, questions with regard to this? Yes, we can circulate that and, and have that ready for the final reading. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anything from the public with regard to this? Okay. Hearing none, that moves on to uh, third reading. Thank you. Chief, Tina, Tony, thank you. All right. Um, I know we've had some public comment earlier, but before we close out today's meeting, we'll open up to public comments for on any topic. Anybody like to address uh, the mayor's office, city council? Debbie, if you wouldn't mind, na name and address and push that button and get your mic on. There you go. Oh, you almost had it. There you go. I don't have my glasses on. I'm gonna borrow my readers. Um, Y'all, um, I'm Debbie Beeman. I live on Walnut Street. And I saw a proposed thing today on Facebook for the Dollar General downtown. And those Dollar Generals that have groceries in them and the Dollar General part too. I actually lived in a town who had one and it was very nice. Actually, the food prices were competitive, if not cheaper than Walmart. So I'm here to say that I have a neighbor in an electrical wheelchair and she can't get up to the hill. And I called her and told her about this, and she was almost crying that she's so excited about this. So I know people are opposed to it, some people are opposed, but I'm telling you, from the people like down here where I live, this is a big deal, and it means a lot. And I appreciate anybody who has anything to do with this. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So I wanted to thank you all. Debbie, thank you. We, uh, the council, you probably saw and what Debbie was referring to. Prior to this meeting, we had a redevelopment commission, uh, which passed a resolution to enter into a contractual agreement with uh, Rafferty Development LLC for the development of a Dollar General Market store at the former ruler. Uh, we still have some work to do, but over the course of the next 90 days, um, we will be working with the developer to get final approval by Dollar General to locate a DG market in the former ruler building. City Madison is partnering with the developer uh, to enhance that, uh, that location. It's gonna be a very unique market. It will be a grocery store what, which also sells household, uh, household products. We've been working on this as a top priority for the last three years and um, uh, it's taken a lot of effort, uh, Tony and Emily and, and others on our redevelopment commission to get us to this point. There's a tremendous amount of investment happening in that corridor. This, this is a, an anchor that is so needed for uh, downtown Madison and for the residents here and, and across the river and for the city. So Debbie, thank you for your remarks and for the fudge you brought me earlier from Scoops. I appreciate that. I only brought that because of this, y'all. <laughs> normally I'm our <laughs> uh, Any other public comments? First, let me just thank everyone for serving because your being here says you want what's good for the city and my being here says the same thing. Thank you. So um, I have a couple of annoyances, so let me take care of the little things. Um, One-way streets. There are drivers that do not know how to make a left-hand turn on a one-way street. They're turning in front of me cutting me off because they're turning from the right lane. So I really would like to see some arrows on there so that maybe they can relearn the rules of one-way travel. So that's just one. The other one is I was so surprised to call our police department and have to sit through a recording. I thought if any number should be direct. 
it would be to the police. Because sometimes when I'm driving along, I see vandalism occurring, or I see the big semis where they shouldn't be. And I'd like to make a quick call to the city police to, le to alert them. I can't unless I can pull off the road and then wait for all the spiel. I, I just think that's not a good idea. And I'd like for you to reconsider that the main aspect of getting through to someone is a lot easier. May I ask, do you know what number you were calling? Were you calling Central Dispatch or were you calling a non-emergency number? 3347. Not everything is a 911 call. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm that's calling the, dispatch. That's a central dispatch. Yeah. yeah. Central well, it's annoying. <laughs> I never hear any complaints. I don't know who's supposed to be calling me. And was it doing normal what work hours? Are, what? What I number are you calling? Call right in the morning to get emergency. What number are you call? Um, I have it here on my phone. Four, if you call the number, option two, you don't get an answer. No, I don't. But if I'm in a car, I can't do that on my car phone. Oh, I see. Um, okay. Well, hopefully that's uh, an anomaly, and the next time you call, you'll speak to a live person. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Please, please do. Just to thank them for their service. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, my main question is that I haven't seen any work at Crystal Beach. What's going on? Well, we gave a full report at the Parks Department last night on Crystal Beach, and our president of our Parks Board may want to elaborate. But oh, great. Well, or I, I'm happy to as well. The, one of my announcements in the mayor's comments was going to be our groundbreaking. But, uh, yeah, I was going to mention that too. Board, so. so a lot of the work right now is like behind-the-scenes work. Like we've had the filters already delivered, and they're in storage. The uh, work trailer is there. Um, the electricians have been there one day working on one of the boxes. So a lot of it right now is lining up the subcontractors and ordering all the parts so that when we get to a certain area, we're not waiting three weeks for something to show up. And so we have the groundbreaking on June 13th. 13th and then you should see feet on the ground very, very soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, that's one of my great loves. And it's certainly a treasure to the city and to the country. Uh, so I, I just keep tabs on that. Were you beautiful. ever a lifeguard at Crystal Beach? No, but I was there every day. Okay. And I appreciate you asking instead Thank of just you. assuming the worst. I appreciate you giving us a chance to explain. Yeah, that's. We're actually on schedule, and, and uh, uh, you'll see once we close and deploy on the, the 13th, uh, uh -huh. tremendous amount of on the ground vertical. The, the pool has already been demolished. There's been a tremendous amount of work. Uh, on the pool construction project itself. And uh, so anyway, I'm happy that it's going to be, uh, we're having a groundbreaking next week. Um, and so the projected finish date is still firm? It'll, or it'll be turned over to the city around May the 9th for training, um, substantially complete by the 15th and open prior to open ne Memorial next Day year. weekend. Next mm -hmm. year. Wow. Yep. That is it's gonna be wonderful. Good. That'd be great. Yeah, we, oh. have, we have one of the best pool contractors in the country uh, building mm -hmm. one of the most unique pools and aquatic centers in the country. Interesting. Yeah. I hope to review that. Um, I was, I I was concerned about this that we needed more to do here in Madison. Ma'am, that is the uh, uh, Jefferson. Ca that's an article about the Jefferson County Human Relations Commission. So that's not in your domain at all? No. So I need to go to the county? County commissioner meeting, yes. Oh, lovely. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, I'm willing. Yes. Because it's the other one thing you do, and I can't find a weekend that I have free. I don't so. have a free weekend either. <laughs> I didn't get there's, it. <laughs> there's so much to do. It's awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for being here. Anyone else? Uh, our next meeting will be Tuesday, June the 20th.
and it will be outside at Oak Hill Park, or actually maybe under our sh new shelter at Oak Hill Park. And we'll be also celebrating the ribbon cutting for the new park. If you haven't driven by there, it's beautiful. Uh, still under construction, there's still a few things to do, but you can really see it taking shape now. Combine that with the um, upgrades at Gaines Park, and uh, as well as the other things that we're doing around town. And then we have one other, June 20th, we'll be having the dedication ceremony for the opening of our mural plaza at Mulberry and Second Streets. Oh, 23rd. So right. this is June 20th, June 13th, Crystal Beach. 23rd is the dedication for the mural plaza, which is a phenomenal asset for uh, the City of Madison's uh, Cultural Arts District and is integrated in with all the other economic development that's happening there, including uh, the DG market, neighborhood market that we talked about earlier. So tremendous amount of investment happening all across town. And um, I will stop there. And if there's any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. If not, we'll have a motion to adjourn and I'll see you guys at Oak Hill. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Council. Patrick, thanks for joining us. I think that worked out okay. Yeah, it yeah. worked great. Thank you.